Our 2012 CES coverage is powered by Ford. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2012, checking out the latest and really interested in some streaming video. And guess who popped by? It's Ken from LiveView. Hey, Ken. Hey, how's it going? It goes really well. That does not look like a backpack. That is uh, not a backpack, indeed. This is a much smaller device. Uh, it's uh, held either on your belt or uh, another carrying mechanism. So you're familiar with uh, the original version of LiveView, the back. Right, right. And the back of the box version of that is you pop six 3G or 4G modem USB dongles into a backpack with a like a x86 board, some custom software, and it just streams whatever your component and composite or HDMI or whatever in is out to the web, so you can stream video to the internets and people can watch it and they like it. Yep, exactly. So, so that's the idea. And originally we started with uh, a backpack device, like you said, USB dongles. Uh, actually, last year we released our LU60 product that uses um, its own internal modules and our own proprietary antenna and not just USB dongles. Yeah, I believe we saw that at NAB. Yep, yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably saw the booth there. And uh, now we're releasing this, the LU40. Uh, which uh, has the main advantage of just being a lot smaller. So, is, is that what the main advantage is? Is that the main response to customer feedback, or, or what's the design principle behind? I think that everybody wants smaller devices. I mean, that, you know, that's kind of a no-brainer. So, uh, we've known that for a while. Originally, we had to use a, a bigger form factor uh, because of various uh, hardware reasons. But now we can uh, finally do a smaller form factor. We'll still have two separate lines of products. The, uh, the backpack will still be more powerful, more resilient, it could be because it has a stronger antenna, it has more modems, uh, just more uh, encoding power because it's bigger. Uh, but the LU40, we believe, will uh, meet most of uh, what uh, broadcasters or any uh, video provider needs at a much lower cost and much uh, more portable. Okay, so say I'm a broadcaster and I just need to do some event work where I need to stream some stuff live, whether it's just to acquire the footage, edit real quick and ship it out, or if I've got live viewers, uh, how do I go about getting this and doing that? Sure, so how do you obtain the unit, basically? Yeah, and how does the whole service work if somebody's new to the whole platform? Sure, so um, you know, basically you get the hardware from us. We provide it usually as a complete package. So we include all the data plans in, in there with all the carriers. So you don't actually have to sign up for separate accounts with Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and so on. We provide all that for you. Uh, so when you show up in the field, you just plug in your camera. In this case, I'm using an HEMI uh, video card, but you can easily swap this card out with an SDI card uh, or composite. You plug in your camera or other video device, and really, you, you just push uh, play and start uh, transmitting. It's, uh, it's that simple. So what's under the hood? So under the hood, and I'm happy to actually show this to you. I'll uh, open it up. I'm, I also powered it on. And so I'll, uh, I'll take it out of the uh, carry case. And uh, this is the unit itself. Again, in this unit, we uh, are still not using the uh, modules and the antenna that we have in the uh, bigger backpack. Uh, but rather we have USB air cards, so you can see how we have these uh, cards just in here. This is our hardware um, underneath, and that's basically how it works. And uh, you'll see uh, the screen popping up soon, and uh, we can start connecting and transmitting. All right, Linux, BSD, BOS. Yep, this is working on uh, Linux. Uh, it's our own proprietary uh, algorithm and software running on uh, Linux platform. So here you can see the... Uh, the uh, user interface. We don't have a camera connected, so you're not going to see the preview. But it's really as simple as pushing, uh, you know, this play button here and uh, and start and transmit. So, okay. So when can we expect to be able to get our hands on this? Um, so right now, this is in beta. We actually had our first public transmission. We've been testing this for uh, a couple of months now. Uh, we had our first public transmission with this unit today here at CES. And uh, we believe that it's going to start shipping to customers uh, uh, within uh, the next couple of months. Well, this right here is a great world, real world test of the unit. Obviously, the cell towers are completely jammed at CES. So, with only four modems on the four different US carriers, um, how are you, uh, what kind of throughput are you actually getting? This has actually been one of the most fun parts about uh, today. So we, out of the uh, four carriers that we have integrated, three already have 4G networks. So uh, we have Verizon 4G, AT&T 4G, and Sprint 4G. And between all those 4G carriers and the fact that there aren't that many 4G devices out there, 
we've been pushing at four plus megs here. Uh, so it's been great. Yeah, four megs of video on this new unit, which has been just spe uh, spectacular. Wow, that's some decent bandwidth. Thank you so much, Ken. Really appreciate it. Of course, for continued coverage of CES, all things, head over to revision3.com slash CES. And once again, I would love to thank Ford for powering our coverage. With Sync Services, you can use the power of your voice to stay in control of your Ford Focus driving experience. You can even use Sync to get the current weather report for where you are or where you are going. Sync Services make it happen, all while your hands stay on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Weather. Weather. Press the voice button and say a city and state. San Francisco, California. San Francisco, California. At 2.18 p.m., it's partly sunny and it's 51 degrees with a slight breeze. Thanks to Ford for powering our CES coverage.